All right, hello again everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me today. I wanted to make a quick video and just talk you through the startup procedures for the engines and the A320 here. So before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave comments down below, all that kind of good stuff. Just helps me keep the channel moving forward here and hopefully keeps this uh, exciting and engaging for everybody. So uh, what I want to do today, I mean, you know, most of you folks that are watching this video, you're, you're, you might be flight sim enthusiasts or you might, you know, for whatever reason, you, you've got an idea about what exact buttons get pushed, you know, to get these engines to get started in this airplane. But I just wanted to add a little bit of real world commentary to tell you about some various things that, you know, we might be looking at in the flight deck from a real world standpoint and, and just kind of add to, to your knowledge base a little bit. So everything I'm going to talk about today is just assuming that everything works normally on the airplane. And, you know, what I mean specifically is, you know, most days when we're out there starting the engines in the airplane, we have the APU available to us. And this is the, the source of our bleed air that, you know, remember when you're starting a jet engine, you actually need some air to, you know, get the internal workings of the engine spinning. Uh, to get the whole starting process, you know, underway and, you know, get getting the things to light up for you. So whether you take that bleed air from the APU, which is our normal scenario that we do most of the time, that's the preferred way of doing it. It's just nice to have the APU there and it's, it, it really, it's a pain when it's not working. You know, just to remember that there is an alternative way to start these engines with the use of a, an outside air cart or sometimes called a huffer cart that it's just, it just, plainly, you know, um, blows this pressurized air into the engine specifically just to get all that, the turning going on and allow us to start them. So like I said, everything I'm going to talk about today is an, is a, an engine start with the APU available. So we'll talk about that um, as we move on here. But, you know, one of the first things I want to call your attention to is just, you know, right here on the EWD or the engine and warning display here, we have these, uh, the indications for the engines, of course, and just the amber X's are telling us that, you know, nothing's happening down there. The plane is not detecting anything. There's nothing to even read. So, you know, this is what it looks like when you're, when you're sitting at the gate, essentially, with the engine shut down. So, you know, just assuming that we're at the point where we're ready to, you know, get the engines started here, um, you know, we, we've got the APU already you know, up and running at this point here. But one of the, the important things we're gonna to wanna to do after the APU is up and running is we're gonna to wanna to go up here to the APU bleed switch and we're gonna to wanna to turn that on. So if you didn't turn the, the bleed switch on and open that valve, you would have no bleed air once again to get these engines spinning. So very important step in the process. So start your APU first, open up the APU bleed. And if you wanted to come, you know, down into the, um, let's see if I can bring up the, the bleed page here and we can take a look and just verify exactly what's going on there. You can see that, um, you know, the APU is, is doing this job of feeding all the bleed air out. You know, in this case, you know, at, at this point in time, uh, the packs are being fed and, um, you know, the, the air is being routed out towards these engines, which is where we're gonna wanna want them to go essentially for the starting process. So uh, just one thing to point out to you. Uh, one other interesting thing also about the, um, the start sequence of on the A320 is that, you know, when you, um, when you start the engines, the plane automatically closes the, the shutoff valves to the packs. And if you think about the reason why this is, I mean, that you need to have um, some specified amount of pressure that's being fed into those engines to keep everything spinning. And if you are robbing some of that pressure away by trying to continue to run the packs while you're starting the engines, um, it wouldn't be sufficient. You wouldn't have enough airflow. So, um, you know, when you're on an airplane, it, you know, it might be interesting to you. I'm sure you've probably noticed as a passenger that, you know, when they get ready to start the engines, it kind of, kind of feels like the air conditioning is shutting off. So that's just, you know, one, one specific design characteristic of the system. That's like what it's doing, you know, behind the scenes there and, you know, why it's set up the way it's set up. So just um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. But one, one thing that I wanted to make mention of. Um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you guys is that, you know, the, the start sequence on the A320 is, it's very automated. So, you know, really it's just, all it is a matter of throwing a switch, you know, as you're going to see here in a second to get everything started. But the nice thing about, you know, the A320 is if it detects a fault or if there's something going wrong with the start, it's actually automatically going to abort the start and it is going to, you know, try to clear the error, error and clear the, um, you know, the fumes and the fuel that might be, you know, residing in the engine still, and it's going to try to start it again. It's, it's really um, a nice feature that's built into it. And, you know, for folks that have flown older aircraft or you're familiar with older aircraft, I mean, this was a highly manual process where you were, you know, having to, you know, flip more switches, let's say, and more tightly, closely monitor everything that was going on. So just, just a really neat thing about the, um, the A320 here. But 
you know, basically when we're ready to start the engine, all you do is you, you come down here to the engine start panel, and this is of course on the center pedestal there, and we're just gonna bring the, uh, the ignition switch over to the start section here. And all we're gonna do is, uh, you know, bring the, the engine master switch from the off position to the on position. And one other thing that I, I should mention too is, you know, most of the time, in fact, actually I should say all the time when we're flying this airplane, we always start the number one engine first. It's just the way that the manufacturer designed it. It's the way that all the manuals are written. So if you're ever gonna single engine taxi, it's always on the number one engine and it's just the way it is. So one thing to, to make mention of if you guys are trying to be, you know, highly accurate, <laughs> what you're doing at home there. But so all we do is we, um, we bring the, the switch up into the, um, the, um, the start position there, or the on position, and we're gonna see a couple things happen. Uh, normally, we'll we'll just monitor. Oops, uh, we'll monitor the um, the top section of the EWD here. Everything kind of happened quickly. I, I wanted to talk through that a little bit faster, but basically, um, you know, we saw the N2 being spun up by that air pressure there, and once it gets to about 20% of uh, its N2 speed, the fuel will be introduced. So here we have fuel flow coming into the mix, and you'll see the um, the corresponding rise of the EGT. So we have a light off, engines up and running. We're burning fuel back there, and then you know along you know with this process and at this point in time the n1 of course has come up and that big fan up front is starting to spin now and uh, we have a an up and running stabilized engine here and this 18 percent is about accurate you know this is normally what you'd see you know in an idle setting you know in the real world there so uh, one other thing to make mention of too when the engine starts up um, after it's up to speed the um, the main engine generator will turn on or you know it'll it'll get that um, you know enough rotation speed in the engine, let's say, to to allow it to create its power. And it's really interesting. You'll know when the the en uh, engine's more or less like stabilized and it's up to speed because you'll hear these relays switching over. Like once the the main Gen One comes online, um, you hear this really like pronounced like clunk, and it's like these switching of these relays that the electrical system internally is it, it knows when to switch from which power source to which power source. You know depending on you know, of course, which generators are up and online. So it's just like an interesting thing. It's like kind of your cue as the pilot to know that, you know, once you hear that big clunking sound, uh, everything is all good to go. You got a good engine, the, the generator's online and uh, you're off, off and running. So pretty much the exact same procedure for the number two engine there. Um, one thing, I guess we can take a look at it real quick here. I'll, I'll just throw the switch and hopefully I can, I can catch this a little bit quicker so we can see um, basically what I, what I described a moment ago happening. So, um, yeah, this is uh, a little bit inaccurate on my sim here. You wouldn't see the fuel flow until you get to about 20% N2. Uh, so that's just one small thing. But, you know, we can watch the next couple things happen here where the EGT rises. You know, there you got, you know, the, the igniters are firing that fuel in there, and then the N1 is slowly coming up here, and it'll stabilize. At about the same point there at our, our 18 percent, um, you know, uh, percent N1 RPM range there. So that's all I pretty much have for you guys today. If you have any questions about any of this stuff or anything else you want to see, uh, please leave comments down in the, uh, the comment section there below. And I uh, hope everybody's staying healthy. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll talk soon.